I can't believe it. Laney has gotten me to like zinc photo prints. Let's get into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. So any longtime viewer of the channel will know I'm not a huge fan of Zinc photo printing. I think there's still a place for it, especially if people have like kids, it's a cheap way to have something physical and tangible in a digital world. I still think it's a great place. However, the quality of the prints are just not good. <laughs> so full disclosure, Lainey did send this to me, or at least they wanted to. But I was like, you know what? I don't really like zinc paper that much. But they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second, Chris. You're gonna to wanna to check this out, trust us. And I mean, I did trust them in the past with their four by six dye sublimation printers, which I've done videos on as well. You can check them out in the link in the description. But I went into this with my expectations being at like a, a zero. <laughs> This is the Polaroid Mint, and this is the Kodak Classic. This prints a bit more square and the largest zinc paper that I've ever seen. And I'm doing the video on this topic, and I'll leave a link in the description below, where I review this camera alongside the Kodak, and uh, it's not great. It's not really good quality prints. I know it's not necessarily supposed to be the best out there, and we'll touch on that in just a second, but Laney, on the other hand, <laughs> has done something to change my mind. If you don't know what zinc is, it's an inkless way to print color photos. I mean, you can do black and white as well. You just turn the color photos into black and white. And the way it works is it uses heat. It's, so it's a thermal paper that it basically burns itself into the paper. There's a little bit more technical terms to it, but that's as simple as I can really go into it. But first let's talk about how to get this set up. It uses Bluetooth to connect, so make sure you turn that on if you're running into problems getting it connected. It doesn't use Wi-Fi at all. This is the simplest thing I have ever tested and tried to set up and just print photos. You guys know I've done reviews on their 4x6 dye sublimation printer, which is still one of my favorites alongside the Canon Selfie, but the app that they have to use that printer is the same app to use this. Polaroid doesn't even do that with their dye sublimation prints. You have to download a separate app to do it. And worth knowing the app to use this does work with Apple and Android. And to connect to it, you'd be up and printing within 30 seconds. So you just download the app if you don't already have it installed and you just add a printer. It's only a few steps to even get started. And the only problem I ran into was it does take about 15 to 30 seconds for the printer to show up initially to add it to your app. Once it's set up though, you never have to do it ever again. So if you see blank, just let it sit there for about 15 to 30 seconds and it should pop up and you'll be good to go. Now that is one of two bugs that I have seen, if you even want to call that a bug, but there is one other thing that we'll touch on in just a second. And the cool thing is inside the box, it comes with five packs of 10. So you get 50 photos ready to go right out of the box. And it has USB-C to charge, finally. <laughs> Every freaking tech that comes out these days uses micro USB. Ah, that's super frustrating. USB-C is the way to go. Come on tech companies and Laney did it. They did it, thank you. Now within the app, you have some options to print your photos. You can do borderless, you can even do Polaroid, which is interesting to see within the app because technically that name is trademarked. So I don't know if they can technically do it. Maybe they're getting away with it. I don't know, maybe there's some legal stuff I just don't know about. But you can turn these into like a Polaroid frame. And then you can do some other things in there like basic color adjustments and there's some filters as well. You can select up to 10 of them and just print them all in one go. But in the past, zinc paper in my experience has been less than anything other than kind of just trash. <laughs> but this is not trash, this is by far the best I've ever seen and the most acceptable. I mean, heck, this is kind of pretty dang good. It almost gives it its own unique look and it's not a bad thing. Now, does this look exactly like it does on your phone? No, because at the end of the day, it's still a consumer grade printing option. If you want a high resolution photos, you gotta step it up a little bit. I mean, heck, even the dye sublimation ones are phenomenal, but they're still never gonna be as good as you could do as taking it down to like, a print shop and getting a four by six print or even blown up shot. Those are the high end stuff. If you're wanting that, then stay away from all this stuff. But this is in your pocket and you can print photos that are passable. And not only are they photos, 
these are stickers too. <laughs> I, I, I'm so glad there's finally a printer that, that it produces a higher quality photo. That way I can utilize the sticker feature because I think it's so much fun. And the best part is this thing is under a hundred bucks. Yeah, and it comes bundled with 50 packs of photos. And the paper itself is not expensive at all. Any brand of zinc paper will work in this. You can get 50 photos for around 20 to $25. Pretty great. Some pro tips that I noticed uh, when printing these. Print photos that are not as contrasted. I noticed those tend to get a little, ever so slightly washed out. But even then, it's not terrible. Also, I wanted to test deep saturated photos and it did a pretty dang good job. However, on this one of me eating uh, turkey leg at a restaurant's fair, the sky was very saturated blue and it didn't quite translate in the print. But you never would have known that if I didn't tell you that. It's still a phenomenal photo by itself. Now, normally the thing that I notice in these photos from other companies, especially like the Polaroid Mint, is that the photos have tons of tons of lines through it. I would assume it's from the ejection motor and it's just inconsistent as it's rolling it out. Because remember, the way this works is it heats up and rolls across it. And if there's any sort of inconsistencies, some areas are gonna get a little bit hotter than others. So I would assume those lines would be a cause of that. But this doesn't have that problem. It comes out nice and smooth, which only takes about 30 seconds for the photo to print. Now that second bug that I was mentioning earlier, the one thing I did run into when getting these printed was I was trying to print a photo of my dog Paco here. And I had actually edited this a little bit in an app called Snapseed. And I think the way that app saves the photos, it actually preserves the history of those edits. So if I ever brought it back in to the app, I could actually re-edit it without any loss of detail. I'm pretty sure. Now that makes that photo a much larger file size. And I was running into the problem of it not printing on the printer because it said the file was too large. So I had to print the unedited photo and kind of just make some tweaks within the app. I never ran into that problem again, so I wanted to put it to the test. So I pulled a photo that I had shot on my digital camera and edited it in Lightroom, exported it out at high resolution and then printed it on the printer and didn't have any problem. So you might run into that depending if you edit your photos or not, but otherwise never ran into a problem uh, after that. I think I'm gonna be using this thing a lot, lot more. But thank you so much for watching. That's all I got for you today. Are you gonna be picking one of these up? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.